Now last week I finally got my hands on what is effectively a hybrid iron. And I call them the easiest irons that I have ever tried. But is that really the case or is forgiveness purely a myth? So in today's video I am going to get that Cleveland Halo, that hybrid iron out here on the golf course. It's a 7 iron, it's got 30 degrees worth of loft. But I'm also going to bring along with me a more traditional 30 degree style of 7 iron. And I want to know what is the difference between the two of these things. And like I said, is forgiveness really a myth or not? Well, these are two very, very different irons. This Cleveland Halo is, as I said, it's pretty much, well, almost a hybrid, if you like, more than an iron. It does things incredibly well, incredibly simple, and incredibly easy to launch the ball. And it's very easy to see why you can gain a whole lot of confidence from this style of club. But the other club is much more of your traditional, well, it's a muscle back, it's from Tacoma. Like I said, it's got exactly the same loft, but they're very, very different in the way they look. And that's just one thing that separates these irons. And let's address that look situation right now, because for me, we're looking today in comparing forgiveness. But there's a big thing that you've got to overcome, and that's the looks and style of the halo type iron. Because if you can't overcome that, then it doesn't matter how forgiving this thing is in this test, you will never end up playing it. Because what we're led to believe is this bigger bulk and mass, the overall head profile, is allowing for it to be built in a more forgiving face, and therefore making golf that little bit easier for us. But if you look at them both together, there is only one winner for me, and it's a clear winner. That Tacoma iron is day and night better on the eye it just looks so much classier than that of the halo iron so personally i have a major issue with that looks department and i'm going to need a major sway in terms of performance and forgiveness for me to move from one type of iron that traditional style into this new hybrid style and i don't think we can ignore that and in today's video what i want to know for myself is can i notice any difference between the performance of these two clubs out here in reality yes i've got dry ball data but what happens when i try these clubs side by side can i actually visibly feel like i've got some forgiveness in this halo hybrid iron as opposed to that traditional style and i've got to say in those two shots which are probably going to finish yeah pretty much side by side not seen a great deal of difference and certainly not felt like one was more forgiving than the other well, that's really interesting because both the tee shots that i hit off and these two that have landed on the fairway almost uh, well a couple of yards to separate them off the tee interestingly enough their halo iron was about five to eight yards longer and they've switched round here where that was the longer ball came from the tacoma iron so no difference in terms of what we've seen out here on the fairways in terms of how these balls have traveled Interesting enough, these were both downwind. Let's see what happens when we play into the wind and see if that spin number affects, or how great an effect it has on distance traveled. Right, next up is to play both irons from, well, from the rough. I mean, these things aren't necessarily nestled down, but what I want to know is, particularly from the, the hybrid iron, is, is this kind of uh, rail system, this wider sole, which was so helpful when I did the initial review, and I think could be a great kind of assistance um, and benefit over and above this of your typical type of iron out of this type of lie. We'll go with a regular iron first of all. It's a real windy day, it's not the easiest of days I can tell you to be playing golf, but uh, let's see if we can dig this out and what impact it has from the lie in the rough. Well, that's a really good strike. Well, that's definitely shot of the day. That's right on the flag. We'll see what it's done in terms of, I mean, you can have, we'll have a little bit of a closer look from the camera later on, but that's cut through the turf quite nicely. Um, and quite honestly, no issues whatsoever. I'm hoping that camera behind us stays up long enough to pick up this next ball tracer. Now let's see what the hybrid iron does. Well, again, that's cut through. I mean, I found it, if anything, a little bit more difficult to get the club head through the rough there. I don't know whether that makes sense or not, but it certainly cut through easier with the more blade style, traditional style iron. 
So in that case, I would probably favor the contact I got with the Tacomo traditional iron. Right next up, we're playing into the wind, although the flag's pretty dead, it's protected. There's a lot of breeze up there. And I just want to see that wasn't a huge amount of difference in terms of spin. But on my previous test with the Halo iron, it was averaging six and a half thousand spin, which is a really good number in terms of control. But the, the launch is also very high and that coupled together, I just wonder how detrimental that is in terms of performance, in terms of carry distance that has um, with this, um, the halo type iron. That's assuming we can hit half a shot to get it up there. That's a really good strike, a bit cutty. So we're 150 into the flag. I mean, in all honesty, that's into the heart of the green. The ball flight was good. And the answer to the question, I think, was no. It didn't have any impact at all. It was uh, flighted well and uh, has done everything you'd expect it to do. Let's see if we can reproduce another shot with a Tacoma and see what happens any differently. Again, similar sort of shot, I don't think. Yeah, they're almost in identical positions. It'll be interesting to see if we get on the green because I think they're almost side by side. But yet again, from a performance factor, neither have done anything any different. And I am starting to question whether the whole idea of forgiveness in a bigger, bulkier club head is purely a myth. If you're finding the center of each of these clubs, do they just perform exactly the same? And is it really about when you're starting to find all over the club face, is that when the Halo hybrid type iron comes into its own? Now I've talked about looks in terms of shelf appeal and one being visibly more attractive, let's say, than the other. But there's also a major key difference at a dress that you're gonna have to overcome because once again, they look very, very different. One without doubt would be classed in that super game improvement genre in terms of its size and bulk. And the other, even though it's still classed a game improvement iron from Tacoma, this is by no means a small compact blade. It is still noticeably different and more compact than that of the Halo. So what you've got to ask looking down at these two clubs that I'm showing you right now, which one are you more comfortable with? Because let's be honest, yet again, no matter how much more forgiving one is than the other, it's all about these kind of things that are going to play in your mind and one of the key factors is at address are you gaining more confidence from the bulk and mass that you're seeing of the halo hybrid iron or are you more used to the traditional style and look of the Tacoma iron and therefore swayed towards that it's an interesting one and i'd be more than interested in your opinions now before i go on to tell you just what my thoughts are in terms of performance out here on the fairways, that's nearly gone in the hole. Then I want to have a look at some dry ball data. Now, I collected this earlier on this morning and uh, it's fair to say I was a bit shocked. I'm gonna keep on saying the same things. These are the same loft. One claims to be more forgiving than the other in theory. I would say the CG placement is very different in the hybrid iron than that of the regular iron. So we'd expect to see different launch. But if you look at the dry ball data, there is very little to split these in terms of the performance this morning with the club head speed that I was generating. The ball speed is very, very similar. The launch is not too dissimilar. The spin is not too dissimilar. And the carry distance is, yes, you guessed it, not too dissimilar. And now we're out on the golf course. What I want to see is when happens when you come out in reality when things like the strong wind that's in play today how much impact are they going to have on the slightly higher launching hybrid iron they're the kind of things i want to find out and that's why we've come out on the golf course to find out what separates these two irons in reality you see the thing is for me what i've noticed throughout this video is i have no more confidence with a halo iron in my hand than i do with this regular type of iron from Tacoma. It is purely a mental thing, which suggests to me that when I've got the bigger club in hand and maybe even more noticeable down the longer end of the bag, then it gives me a little bit more confidence. I'm not as concerned as I would be as using the smaller type club. But in reality, is one more forgiving than the other? I'm not so sure they are, you know. Right, I think we'll call it a day there because I always get to a stage in a review where I think I've hit enough golf balls, collected enough data that I can't really learn anymore. And I wished in many ways that I could measure forgiveness in a better way because honestly, manufacturers spout on about how forgiven a club is or not. And uh, as punters, it's very difficult for us to judge um, whether that's true or not. And that's the case in this review. 
I've not seen anything to suggest that the bigger club, the hybrid iron, is any more forgiving than the standard style 7 iron. I've already said that in the video. The, the only thing that differs between the two is the confidence factor at address, and that depends on the individual. And if you're not, if you've got no confidence issues with a standard iron, then I don't think you really need to be moving into halo irons. What halo irons or hybrid irons do, in my opinion, the one thing they do is they help get the ball airborne easier with slower swing speeds and that is without doubt something that is going to ring true when you try these type of irons so if that's your issue if that's what you struggle with then yes the halo irons are a good move but if forgiveness is the thing if you're sort of peppering around the your club face i don't really think you're going to see a great deal of difference there are still significant drop-offs with any golf club when you don't find the center of the club face it's progressed, there's no doubt about it, but ultimately the centre of the club face is always going to be the king in terms of ultimate performance. So out here I can say that for me personally, perhaps done me a little bit of a favour in many ways because I start to think if I'm not playing too well, or maybe I need more forgiveness in the irons I'm playing. I've then used blades in recent weeks that I don't really find that I'm struggling with either. So I think forgiveness it's not a myth exactly, but it's something that's maybe a little bit overrated at least anyway. Right, that's me done. Now that's my findings today. You might tell me or you have found totally different to my findings. So by all means, put your uh, thoughts down below and tell me otherwise. As ever, I always welcome your thoughts and opinions. But for now, I'm finished on what is a glorious day here at Carden Park. We're going to finish off the final few holes and I'll see you all soon.